1948, awaiting the, ri the arrival of the Governor of Victoria and Lady Duggan. There's the Mayor of, Bo of uh, Colac, Council Borwick, and some of the councillors. And in a few minutes, you can see the train coming up the track. There's a special train consisting of a, an engine and the vice regal carriage and a guard, of course. The train has now arrived at the station and shortly you'll see the mayor and the mayoress welcoming the governor and Lady Duggan. There, there they are. So they're lining up. There's the mayoress, Mrs. Ray Boyk on the left, and the wife of the town clerk, Margaret Walls, in the centre. You can now see the governor coming as she, uh, onto the platform, and followed by Lady Duggan, and being welcomed by the mayor and the mayoress. It was a brilliant, frosty June morning, and uh, it was quite a pleasure to see. Colleagues weather put on such a good day because Colleagues weather in June can be rather unpleasant, but not that day. Councillor Bowick telling Sir Winston Duggan something of a, what, what is to be seen. The Governor goes back on board for some reason or other, and they decide now to make an official departure. The Mayor and the Mayoress are accompanying the Governor and Lady Duggan, who has received a, some flowers from the Mayoress. And uh, now they're about to uh, board the Vice Regal car. Lord and Lady Gary, as they then subsequently became, but at that time of Sir Winston and Lady Gary, sorry. Winston and Lady Duggan, I should have said, they they stayed on board the train, and I don't know whether there were electric blankets in those days or not, but it must have been very cold. Here you see the official procession down the main street, starting from up at Coles Corner, at the corner of Murray and Hart Street. The town band led by drum major Heck McGregor, and various members of the band, followed by the Colac Fire Brigade, marching steadily along and then here comes the, Co the Colac Fire Brigade engine and the uh, followed by the Colac Rural Fire Brigade. The uh, street presents a different appearance from what it does today. There are the Boy Scouts, uh, or rather the, the uh, Cubs, uh, followed by the Boy Scouts and uh, now here we, here we see the, the guides in full uniform marching in the procession. I'm sorry I can't always identify some of the people, but it's 40 years uh, since this recording was made. Now this is the official truck, or that was, and then followed by the Colleague Daring Company's exhibit. And uh, then you'll see a series of trucks. Now here's, here comes one of the timber millers, the trucks with a, a log from the Otways and then signs of the district produce and of course some there are always a couple of fools in each procession and there they are even even the people on board the, the truck are amused that gentleman i'm sorry i can't identify but maybe some of you who are looking at this film can There are a series of tracks. By this time, they're down to around about the corner of Gellibrand Street, and you can see the SEC corner and uh, Bilson's. That's an indication of the change of dress fashions over the years. Bartlett, who used to have a cafe in Murray Street, Mrs. Bartlett was a great community worker. And uh, the, the colleague banjo band, complete with banjos and in full, full sway. There goes the town band, round the corner. And uh, a procession. Now, the St. Cuthbert's home for boys used to be out on the Illuminate Hill in Diagon's old home, but of course now that's gone. Some representatives of the Lake Colleague Rowing Club, which 
at that time was at its peak. The Australian Legion of Ex-Servicemen, they had their, they had their flows too. And shortly you'll see members of the colleague sub-branch of the RSL. Mind you, at that time the, the local program was designed by many people towards the establishment of the swimming pool which now exists in Gravesend Street on the Central Reserve. And uh, Sid Donaldson, who used to run a, a shop of some sort or other in Bromfield Street, he had his uh, supporters out for the, for the job of pushing for the band and there, and there you see the truck. Patterson's, the furniture people, were still in Murray Street, just up from the old commercial bank and near J.G. Johnson's office. Quinton Brothers' garage at that stage was in, in the old Victoria Hotel in Murray Street. Hamilton's service, well, that was run around the corner in Gillibrand Street. And now there's one of Amidro's and Menzies' trucks with a crowd of the youngsters of the community, or relative youngsters, amusing themselves, followed by the arrival of the royal car, of the bicycle car at the Union Club corner. Now the tall gentleman there is Leo Cullinan, looking much younger than he does today with his mother. And shortly you'll see the formal proclamation of the borough of Colleg as a town with a revenue of over $20,000, which is or 20,000 pounds in those days as it was a requirement of the local government act. That proclamation took place on the uh, Memorial Square after the governor had inspected a guard of honor drawn up consisting of members of the RSL sub-branch. Uh, Mrs. Reddy, the wife of the Shire President, and my wife, Margaret Walls in the red frock, and somehow or other the uh, official procession now leads up to the, to the dais. The governor mounts the dais. The councillor and um, Mrs. Michael McGrath, the Shire President, my wife, and with Mrs. Gee, the wife of the local member, Tom Gee, whom you just seen, seen going up the dais. There are some of the councillors of the day, Councillor Wheel and Mrs. Wheel, uh, Mr. Councillor Meadrows and his wife, and now you see the Mayor re reading the proclamation, or welcoming the Governor rather, to the proclamation ceremony. The address of welcome was then read, and uh, the Governor then chose to re make his reply after receiving his document from his aide, Captain Maxwell. And uh, I'm not quite certain, is that Mr. Gee? And of course the, the children were there as well, and there you see one fine example of a young colleague boy. Roger Meadrose being introduced to the Governor. And finally, after all the ceremony was over, there was a concert that night in the, in the old Regent Theatre. And then the Governor and his wife, after having spent a very frosty night in Colleague, departed on the vice regal carriage back to Melbourne. And that was the end of the proclamation proceedings in 1948. When did Carlisle become a city? Nobody seems to know, but it was coming like everything else.